what up, big rat? Three, ten, Macaddy. Uh, gotta say, just on SmackDown, as you guys know, I can never do SmackDown directly on Friday night because it's really hard for me. But um, now that Monk and Psych have their season finales, which are my two, two of my favorite shows that I watch on Friday nights, not not promising, but I think I can be better on my SmackDown reviews. Okay, let's get to this. Let me start by saying RVD Tito for life. I saw your last video. I actually saw the full 30 minutes. I like that you guys are having your own show. You want haters to call? I'm definitely going to call. Not that I hate you guys. I, you, as you all know, I made that video, RVD Tito for life, a response. One of my personal favorite videos. And I want to address some issues. I want to tell them to their face why they said this. And Doug even said, I'm going to respond because I'm so sure that I'm right. Well, if you say that WWE is shit in the ring, they don't give a shit about their fans, you're definitely not so right. Even though I know, Doug, you didn't say that. Bill did, but still. And you know what, guys? They proved my point. Hey, when did they say they stopped watching WWE? Oh, yeah. 2006. Oh, and by the way, this is not a random thing. Jeff, WWE pushes Jeff more than Matt simply because Jeff is over. I know Jeff is over with the women and with the kids more than anything, but Jeff's more over than he is with, than Matt is. Even Matt was a face. Matt won the ECW title before Jeff won the WWE title. I know it's not much, but I'm saying Matt got their success and Jeff was still more over. So I'm sorry, I was, Jeff. Jeff is always gonna be the more over of the two, and that's why they get they give Jeff the push. Oh, got to track something I said. Lex Luger did not reveal on camera that he was gonna win the title the next day at WrestleMania 10, and they had to change it. That wasn't him. That was Raven who did it when Raven got drunk. Thank you, the Dirty White Boy, for filling me in on that. Now let me get back to the review. Um, Cena Edge is not a sure thing, guys. I, 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 on all the websites that said, the only matches that they say are for sure, most likely, are Triple H Horton, Hardy Hardy, and HBK Taker. See, the edge is not set in stone. Anything can happen. Even, even the matches I just mentioned are not set in stone. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing. And especially this, don't go too I didn't even see a scene on SmackDown. I thought he would at least show up sometime, but he didn't. So, don't much about, it's not a sure thing that he's going to fight Edge. You never know. Edge and Matt Hardy, Edge and Jeff Hardy give a promo. I don't like how Edge mentioned Jeff's drugs. Oh yeah, Jeff, are you on something again? That's a little harsh, but what am I gonna do? And I realize, and uh, basically, it's gonna be Edge versus Matt Jeff tonight for the for for a non-title match. I realized something. The WWE has Shane McMahon versus Randy Orton. They have a non-sanctioned fight. Triple uh, Sting fights Kurt Angle in an empty arena match. Aren't they both the same principle? Especially when Satan said no referee, no rules. They hit fans in the ring for the non-sanctioned fight. And they accomplished more. Like 10 times more than what the empty arena could have ever done. TNA, why, why, why? Why didn't TNA just have a non-sanctioned fight? It actually kind of could have worked. I know, I know, Sting and Angle had to talk. But you couldn't do that in the back. You couldn't have them fight and they go backstage. And Kevin Nash had to shake hands and then they do their whole scene. So yeah, TNA, nice job on that. Um, I'm wondering now, who's in charge? If Stephanie's out of commission and Vince and Shane is out of commission, who's in charge of Raw? No one even, no one even start, ask that question. This is also pretty funny. Edge goes into the office, pick his office, and Kazani's there. He says, you, get out. Yeah, yeah, get out. What people don't know is that Kazani is, um, Ed, was Edge's friend. Ed, everyone else on Edge and Christian were friends when they were little. They were also friends with Kazani. Kazani was... was Fatty and Edge's book. Edge called them Fatty. They were great friends when they were kids. So it's nice to see Kazarni and Edge to push him out. Edge was great friends with Kazarni when they were very young, with like with Christian. So that's something I, I always thought Kazarni. I mean, I know he's not even that good, but I always thought he'd get a great push just because he was best friends with Edge and Christian as a kid. I don't know why, but you never know. Um, Sally, the blondes is what JR called them. Marisa, Michelle McCool beat Eve and Maria. This match was pretty bad. Eve's on the top rope, punching Maurice, and Michelle McKill kicks Eve right here. Right here on the arm. Clearly, you can see it on the arm. And when, and when Eve goes down, she does this. Oh, and Jarrah says, oh man, right in the face. No, it was not. It was just so bad. And I read on NewDQ.com, that's really sad, that Undertake, since there's no gimmicky Playboy match this year, because of the new PG thing, WWE doesn't want to put a diva in Playboy. Um... They still have to have that woman's spot open for Mania. And the sad thing is Undertaker's going to use his pool 
is trying to use his pull to get Michelle McCool to be a mania because Michelle McCool's Undertaker's girlfriend, if you guys don't know. They've been dating for three months now. And uh, it's not fair because I don't even think she's that good. She's good, but she, she's not the best. We have, like, I could say six. Nah, I wouldn't say six. Beth, Mickey, uh, Melina. I have never seen, uh, what's her name? God, the stalker. Hey, oh my god, I'm blanking out here. The stalker's name is, hold on a second. I have it right here. Oh, wait, I have to go back farther. Dang, this is driving me crazy. What's that stalker's name? Is it Mar Maria? Damn it. Can you guys help me out? What's that girl's name? Eh, this is going to waste too much time. If you find her name, put it down there because I completely forgot. Um, and Gail Kim, who's coming back. I even like, uh, I think Jillian's a little underrated. And Katie Lee's also underrated. So those are women that can be better than Michelle. So I don't really want her to use his pull. Um, then the Bella Twins go out with Ms. Morrison. It's clear that, I don't know what they're doing. One Bella Twins was obviously, like, talking to the Miz. And one was, like, disgusted at John Morrison. It, they were never both, sometimes they were both upset, but most of the time, just one of the Bellas was upset. Like, she didn't want to be here. It was clearly the one that didn't make the challenge. The Bella that did make the challenge to have this, to have this Valentine's Day thing was hap kind of happy, sort of. But the other one's just, like, standing there, like, she didn't have fun at all. I don't know why they're trying to split up the Bellas, but... Next week, Miz and Morrison versus Carlito and Primo. You guys know I've been waiting for this. People who say that the TNA Tag Division is, t is a thousand times better than WWE. Well, you got the two best teams, right? In my opinion, the two best teams in wrestling besides the guns. Going at it right now. Yes, I do like them both better than Beer Money. They're going at it next week. Where in TNA, the last number one contenders got fired. And the contenders before that were Abyss and Rhino. Aside from the guns and Lethal Consequences and Beer Money, who else? Is that your superior tag division? I know WWE doesn't have much either. So they have so little number of tag teams that they're having both their champions fight against each other. Um, I've read the spoilers. I'm not going to reveal anything. But I'm just going to pretend I didn't read them right now. Um, I think maybe the Miz and Morrison are going to... Either the Miz and Morrison are going to lose. And then um, Carlito and Primo fight Miz and Morrison for their titles and they lose. And then maybe they have a unification at Mania, which I don't want. But I think they might be needed. But if you're going to make the tag titles universal, then you have to make the world title universal. And same with the women's title. That's my opinion. Um, Chavo. It could, people saying Sheldon versus Benjamin. Why can't it be Chavo versus MVP versus Sheldon versus R-Truth? Because JR specifically said, and he made sure we heard it like five times. You know, Chavo could be a U.S. title contender. You know, R-Truth could be a U.S. title contender. So that could happen. I don't see it happening at Mania because Mania doesn't happen. It's still like a month and a half away. And WWE doesn't really know. You can't really build up the, these guys for another month and a half. So most likely they'll all be in Money in the Bank, which I don't have a problem with. Uh, Triple H obviously tells that he was related to Stephanie. I don't have a problem with that. Is Umaga going to face? Because when he beat Scotty Goldman and next in the next match, he got pretty big pop. And bye-bye, Scotty. Scotty got the axe. A couple days ago, he is gone from WWE. Sorry, Colt Cabana. I know we never really got to see a lot of you, but... I think he'll, he'll be one of those talents that WWE will let back in like five years until he gets more developed or something. You never know. I don't like this Kozlov thing. I really don't. I really still think it should be HBK. The way they're putting it, this one I have to say it so you guys don't get confused. Um, next week, uh, Kozlov's going to beat The Undertaker. It's the only thing, well, I have to say something else about that. Next week, Kozlov's going to beat The Undertaker clean. And that doesn't look good because that means that maybe they might have a triple threat or fatal four, which I really don't want. So, God's sakes. Find a way to end this clause off thing and end it fast. Like I said, I don't I don't think he's as bad as everyone says he is, but I don't want him to fight Taker at Mania. My point. Okay, uh, then the main event. It was pretty obvious what was going to happen. Chess swan Tom Bomb's Edge. Matt Hardy gives him a twist of fate. Says, I want you next week. And then Spears Jeff Hardy show ends. Guys, this storyline, people say, oh my god, why aren't they fighting Mania? They are going to fight at Mania. And this one I have to reveal because you guys are going to like, quit the WWE or something. They're going to they're gonna go next week, Jeff's going to come in street clothes and say, I can't fight you, you're my brother. They're going to do the whole Bret Hart, Owen Hart, and the whole Undertaker can't give me Mania, which I would love very much. Um, send in questions for a Q&A, because I have six questions, but I want more. And send in questions for New York Sports Freak. He wants to do his first Q&A, so make sure you send him questions. And also send me some questions, too, because last time I asked for questions for a Q&A, I got like ten.
Give me questions, guys. I need a couple more to do Q&A number five. And get sports figures on questions. I'm Big Rat. Three, ten, out. Peace.